uh, outreach to people we don't understand. Oh, we're so afraid. And we're assuming that, um, that this bad behavior is, is wrong and it just has to be stopped. But we try to reframe those assumptions and we tried to say that, um, uh, well, actually, you know, uh, this, this information stuff is a tool. Look at the resources that's handy. Look at how people can connect. So let's see the impact of, really, it's, it's an unusual and amazing resource at this time in the, in the history of the globe that we have such communication. And then also, what if our, our fear of the other is actually part of a deep natural process? And so just in summary, how can we turn what we see as a dung heap when we see a dung heap out there, where do we see the green shoots? What are the green, healthy things coming up out of the dung heap? But what if it's not a dung heap at all? What if it's a compost pile? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sally. <laughs> 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 I'm Martha. Our group uh, really focused on the dilemma of um, just an overwhelming, the big scale problems, that oversaturation of things. Um, that there's a lot of noise and chaos, and how do you um, let go of that tight hold that we have on the noise? Um, some of the limitations and assumptions we had was um, this overwhelming sense of urgency, that we need to make a huge change happen, it needs to happen now, um, and that we need to overthrow the corporations and war, and you know, these big scale, like, you know, that, um, that your life doesn't make a difference unless you're overthrowing things, um, you know, these, these limitations. Um, and so in order to kind of reframe that, we, we uh, talked about that it's helpful to be a part of the community to find uh, support and guidance there, to realize that you are making a difference. Um, and to acknowledge that we're pond ripplers, if you will, and to acknowledge and embrace the fact that if you do make a small change, it does affect everybody around you, and that is in fact a very beautiful and profound and important thing. Um, to embrace others' opinions and perspectives and listen. You know, not to bring in your own resistance and limitations, to be very open to, to hearing what other people have to say. Um, another way it would be to raise your awareness and consciousness, um, creating a more open mind. Um, and I'll end on, to, a good way to do this is also to spread love and to create change by spreading love in the small ways is, you know, just a compliment or a hug, hug somebody. And how many times have you, you know, how many times have you walk down the street and you don't smile at anybody? You know, if, if taking those, that consciousness and awareness and saying, I'm going to smile at the next person I see on the sidewalk, and they're going to smile at the next person they see on the sidewalk, and that person might go to work and smile at their boss, and the meeting's going to go better, and you know, all of those things. So really acknowledging the fact that those ripple effects really are important and um, create some big changes. My name's June. So what's going on globally? We have created a heck of a lot of stuff here on this planet. <coughs> so it's the conflict of all the, the belief systems that are currently all over and all over the spectrum and, and, and all over the place. So we said some of the problems or some of the, the assumptions that we hold in and around this is that we believe that everybody deserves to make it. Not everybody believes that we all deserve to make it. The assumption is that there are people who are working against us as we work to transition to a higher place. And that pain is inevitable. And that we're seeing problems and not the opportunities. So to reframe, wonderful thing is to work from, instead of seeing problems, what do we have to work with? What are our assets? What are our opportunities? How can we simply observe and not obs and put ourselves into the situation? How can we observe and see what's really just going on from an unemotional, unattached state? How can we get to a place of forgiveness and release to say that worked at one point and we understand how we got there and we honor the core essence of safety or whatever it is that got us to that now? How's that working for you? Not working for you. How do we release it? And then faith that it'll all be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. <laughs> Did I get it, guys? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
My name is Kim, and my group had Polly, Richie, and Marion in it, and we were the Four Seasons. <laughs> uh, when we talked about the global dilemma right now, there was discussion of the shift of power, like in some places on the planet there's a grab for power, and other places there's these feelings of powerlessness. And so if you really take that to a theme, it's very easy to feel disempowered right now. You know, terrorism, which is really a form of fundamentalism. You don't know people hurting other people for their beliefs. 24-hour news feed, constant stimulation and dramatization of somewhere else, not here. Uh, and technologies like our iPhones that make everything here and now. So you can wake up in the morning and look at your phone and see your email. Um, so those are some things that are very disorienting. And in terms of some assumptions that were leading to frustration and disorientation, you know, it's this feeling that there's not a way out, or that you can't find a space to relax, or that uh, you're a victim, and that we don't have options. And so in terms of reframing, you know, one of the things that George Leonard always said is that your mental health was directly uh, correlated with the number of options you saw in any situations you had. And I think one of the most important things we saw for reframing was taking <coughs> time out to identify and embrace the options and alternatives that you have in any situation. So some of them can be about your beliefs and your explorations like knowing that even though we're, we're different in many ways, we do have a soul level of, uh, of connection. Another one was relaxation as a regular practice. And a useful gift from the group was when you relax, to think about the energy that's behind us as we relax, instead of the energy that's in front of us. So we'll get pulled forward. Got so many gifts from this group. and. Uh, being grounded in our community here and now. Oh. Our group was Max, Roger, Brandy, and Craig, myself. Um, the global dilemma that we talked about was so many things are fear-based actions. Um, we're living globally in a reactive mode instead of responsive. Um, we continue to play the global blame game. The president's not doing this. You know, Big Farm is doing this, and we're not taking individual responsibility and empowering ourselves. Um, and we're also really short-term thinking. We're not thinking of the long-term effects or solutions. Uh, assumptions is we assume that there is a them. <laughs> that all our problems are them, theirs, um, and that there's a them that is keeping us from our, our higher potential. There's um, a them that is responsible for fixing things as well, so it's not ourselves. And we're also assuming that our successes are uh, based on exterior markers instead of interior markers um, internally. And how do we reframe this? Holding compassion for ourselves and for others as well and uh, holding others in their highest self and giving them that opportunity and us as well. Thank you. I'm Aldis, and my group was Lori, Gloria, Bob, and Manuel. And our global dilemmas kind of stemmed more from ignorance and unconsciousness, and this kind of goes along also with complacency, materialism and commercialism, um, always needing something, and then disseminating information. And then our assumptions were that we as people are limited in our ability, and that's a reflection of industrialization, and we need to move more into spirituality. And then we measure happiness in quantitative components, components like things, money, whatever, versus qualitative components and reflection. And then instead of giving and providing, um, instead, of, yeah, instead of giving and providing more resources, which end up becoming a band-aid to people and to communities, we need to create sustain, uh, sustainability and empowerment. <coughs> and then 
for how do we frame it, we were kind of a little bit, we had a little, got a little stuck in this, so we decided that have an action plan individually and then move that into a group setting. So it would be kind of like an osmosis process. And then be a source of inspiration without imposing on others, and this will lead to change. touched on um, starvation, rape, murder, uh, material poverty, and spiritual poverty. We talked about the parallel between material poverty and spiritual poverty. Um, the assumptions that we share that contribute to our feelings of disorientation and frustration. Um, we touched on uh, that we look to the media and the sensationalized sort of um, images and repetition of uh, things. Um, and that makes us feel completely overwhelmed. Um, also the assumption that, that we as individuals have to be somehow like making huge changes um, instead of playing you know, the one part that we're able to play. Uh, ways that we can reframe our mental structures um, would be to put our focus into uh, the idea of grassroots organization like IDP and Greenheart. Search them out online because they are available. It changed the, the fundamental belief that, that that's not out there by um, doing a day of research and finding out what it is. Um, we talked about Andrew Harvey's Networks of Grace. And um, also just really honoring that the, the individuals who are more likely to be sort of one on one um, or focused on inward change rather than outward change are really just as important as the global changers, especially in groups like this, because we're all mingling and touching each other. disassociation, that we're at a global pivot point that's potentially uh, leading us either to break down or break throughs. And the main problem, the crux of the problem is the fear of lack, that there was a fear and a belief system connected to a sense of lack and disconnection that was giving rise to all the other things that we're experiencing as problems. And a lack of humanities, a lack of creativity, a lack of connection, and the assumptions holding us in place were that there's not enough not enough time, not enough resources, not enough love, um, and the sense of separation from self, from the earth, from our own body, from each other. And to reframe connecting with spirit as a resource, and that our actual resources and wealth exist in connections, community, creativity, and that cultivating those connections, um, meditation and sense of spirit is a really valuable tool mm -hmm. for going inward, making the inward connections first, and then outward to community, mm -hmm. to others, to the world as at large. And um, then there's this one little quote, I didn't run this by my group first, I apologize, but this quote came out, um, if I change my own heart, I've already changed the world. Hello, my name is Luis, Dominic, Mary, and Marie. Um, for us, our global dilemma is the clash of values. 
we thought that this is the most uh, important uh, root of the global dilemmas. The assumptions that we use. We think that every culture has different uh, values that makes that uh, society or group or community controllable at some point. And whoever controls that society is going to invest, is going to do propaganda, and uh, uh, therefore is going to uh, uh, end up controlling that. It can be money, it can be religion, or whatever value is important for that society. Um, uh, so, based on that, the, the society is going to believe that those values are the right thing for the world, or you know, for everybody. So, um, and there is an assumption that uh, a cultural clash or a change is a bad thing, but it's not. So, uh, to reframe that, our uh, key word was exposure. What means exposure? Is in order to change that group or that society, you <coughs> should clean yourself of your all your values and try to feel yourself as a member of that other society and feel like it. That way, you're going to be able to understand it, and then you're going to be able to act uh, as a leader to make the change. Um, so, uh, you must you must be always work uh, to challenge your own assumptions and to feel the, those other assumptions and confront itself. You might change yourself and think that that other value might be more important for you. Uh, we, so we see a culture clash as a good thing and the, the, a key word is to ve view ourselves as a uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this word correctly, a uh, uh, Tellurian, which means a person of the earth uh, instead uh, of uh, a person of your own country or culture. Thank you. Sally, Lydia, uh, Shoshona, who is actually our scribe, but <laughs> playing this role because she's doing this scribing, and also Diana. Uh, we started off our 10-minute uh, session um, with me describing a process that um, my spiritual community, Companions on the Journey, went through last year, and uh, we called it the Exploration Group. And what we did is we met once a month as a larger group with 50 to 60 people. And then we met in smaller groups of four to 10 people weekly. And we discussed a number of difficult issues that our country and our planet are facing. Uh, one of the first issues we talked about is uh, money in politics. and politics. Um, we also talked about pharmaceuticals and how the industry is focused on profits as opposed to health. We talked about uh, food and agriculture, about geoengineering, about how we've got aluminum and barium in our soils and our foods now. We talked about the banking crisis <coughs> and um, just the whole global money financial situation. Uh, we covered a, a number of other issues. So as you hear me kind of listing these off, there's, um, for me, before this um, this exploration group, there would be this veil that would go over my eyes because these are really scary issues. And um, what I found uh, in this one-year exploration is that we felt the anger but we didn't stay in the anger. So you take the anger, and in ITP, we have this exercise called taking the hit as a gift. So you learn to, uh, to take the hit, and then to um, work with all of this uh, sort of energy, and, uh, and to see what it is. We focused, um, as a group, on how the media lies to us. So there are sources out on the internet to really educate yourself. <coughs> 
Um, and then you can act locally to focus on specific achievable goals and um, then working together as a community and being with like-minded people like you. States that have basically uh, brought us to a standstill and uh, caused various uh, discussions. Um, tolerance versus intolerance, and even immigration reform, and uh, so we've really covered a lot of ground. Um, some of the um, assumptions that we have is uh, that we are powerless. Um, that we don't have any real effect uh, on a global situation. Um, the absolute thinking seems to be a very hard one to break uh, with polarizing states. Um, and also we often have uh, the state of mind that it's not my problem. Uh, so some of the things that we decided that we could do to uh, deal with these and reframe our thinking were to act locally um, to affect a global change, to work on ourselves. Um, the hundredth monkey idea came up that there's a tipping point when we work on ourselves and act locally that it will tip over to a global, uh, into the global state. Um, and self-examination, just really looking at our own thinking and determining and being honest about when we're going into uh, absolute thinking itself. Yeah, thank you. The opportunity to work with Rich, Sherry, and Joe. And we don't have a group name or anything <laughs> special, but we were a good group. Um, so basically, our dilemmas were what everyone mentioned, but the two that really stand out are um, unsustainability, so um, growing at a rate faster than we have resources to sustain ourselves or as humans. Um, also, we were a little um, hard to explain, but our dilemmas and assumptions were kind of intertwined. It was hard to separate them, but we had... Um, instant access to information. So I think Google's come up with Google Glass, where you can have a little object on you and show people where you are at all times. And Skype with our, I, I think of monitoring foreign exchange students and their eyes on Skype or the internet. So for the first time ever, we're connected globally all the time, but that can be a dilemma. So that's what we noticed. Um, our assumptions are that the West the U.S. are the biggest contributors to the problem because we consume a lot. Um, uh, we also assume culture and religion are in different states of consciousness, so the first world versus second world versus third world have different um, needs. Um, we also assume that we're at a critical point in his human history, so we're at the bottom of a trough, and um, Joe's really excited about it. He likes to mention how We'll look back at this time as a time that we can um, change, a really important time where we can come together. Um, and I like how Rich said, solutions do exist, but nations and societies are inner-focused on their own priorities, so we can't connect together to make bigger global change. I think that really hit the nail on the head. And to reframe, um, seeing the challenge is to see that our world is not broken, um, just to see that we're all there. So growth is a process. Um, it's part of nature and not being, a, you know, it's okay. That's something Buddhist in there. <laughs> um, and I liked the thinking overall. We can use multi-sensory tactics to reframe 
So being a teacher, we all have different learning styles. Some kids like to build and construct, and they're very visual. Um, some of my kids are recycling at school, <coughs> music, movement, centering, hara, using learning in different ways, art, um, challenging the way we think. Um, Joe put out spiral thinking, and I don't know what that is, but it's, we're going to learn about it later. <laughs> <laughs>